Tark Patel here from SB Live. Another episode. It's the CIF Southern Section sit down. More special guests, more great moments here for the 2024 2025 high school sports season. The special guest today, Long Beach Poly's Rob Shock, uh, athletic director for the boys over there. A lot of history, a lot of sports, a lot of fandom over in Long <laughs> Beach. We're going to talk about that community. Um, Got to give a quick shout out to Mike and JJ from 562 Sports. Much, I, I just feel much. like I have to. The, what up, Long Beach? I mean, I, I had to get it in there. Uh, Rob, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tarek. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. I think we got to start. I, I always find it important to find out people's origin a little bit. You clearly have a heart for young people or else you wouldn't be involved in high school sports. You've been the AD over there for almost 20 years now. I hate to yes. say it. I know that's something that <laughs> makes your life go by pretty quick, but 17 years as the AD, uh, you've been involved in, in multiple sports and we'll get to that in a second, but where are you from? where did you go to high school? What sports did you grow up playing? Well, obviously, I'm a Long Beach kid, uh, born and raised, uh, went through the Long Beach Unified School District program. Uh, I'm a poly grad, so uh, it's in my heart and, and basically, you know, I mean, just a product of my community and, and wanted to give back to my community. One of the things that when I went through and, and decided what I wanted to do is I wanted to give back. I had great people in my life, I had great teachers at poly who were instrumental in my life, um, especially one, um, Miss Dunn, Sheila Dunn was a, was a great influence. She she encouraged me to go to college. Um, I was probably going to head off into the military, but she's like, you have too much to offer. And so she is someone who was very special to me and why I teach. <laughs> well, I got into teaching and then now as athletics and just really got wanted to get involved in athletics. Um, you know, youth sports as a little kid. Um, I was in a a major car accident when I was younger. That's why I kind of a little bit of that scar there. So I was kind of limited on what I could do uh, at that time and, and things. I just love sports and wanted to be involved and just try to find other avenues to get involved. You know, got into to doing athletic training stuff and then coaching on the side and then spent, you know, a few years doing that and then uh, got my teacher credential and then started teaching. And then obviously working at Poly after I graduated a couple years going back. So I've been a lifer there. <laughs> you know, I, I started back not too long after after college or, you know, while in college and uh, just been there forever. And then, uh, you know, I had an opportunity um, in, I believe in, in 07 when Raul took over and uh, Raul Lara as a head coach at Poly. And we grew up together and gave me opportunity to coach and coach football there. Talk a little bit about what that experience is like. I, uh, we know mm -hmm. Raul Lara is now the head coach at Modern Day, a new yes. era over there in Santa Ana. The Monarchs are under the tutelage of what I think is a disciplinarian in Raul Lara. Yeah. Was that your experience with coaching with them? Was that maybe a trademark of his? Was disciplinary uh, type uh, approach? You know, Ra Raul is very you know straightforward. I think he wants the best for out of his kids. You know, he he does want to instill that you know uh, the discipline, the structure. Uh, he's very organized, uh, very thorough. I um, mean, obviously, you know, it's it's A B C D. You know, with him, um, he's very structured. Like I said, um, a great opportunity for me to learn from him. Again, like I said, we we grew up together. Uh, gave me a great opportunity. I mean, obviously. Um, he, he asked me to coach tight ends, and, and one of the one of the kids I got to coach was Mercedes Lewis, uh, who obviously is in his 19th year in the wow. NFL, and uh, we still stay in touch. And, and you know, is a, is a great way for me to learn. Um, a lot of still learning, still a student of the game, continue to learn. And you know, as now, I mean, one of the reasons uh, I'm still involved is now I'm coaching girls flag football, and uh, you know, this is its second year at CIF uh, Southern Section Sport. So you know, still staying involved and, and still trying to keep myself active we'll, we'll get into the flag football in a second i got you you bring you bring up mercedes lewis we can't <laughs> not talk about them so you're at long beach poly they're a power uh yes, you know yes. at that time you're yes, coaching sir. raul laura if i'm not mistaken won four cif titles maybe yeah. five there i believe yes and so they were good mercedes lewis is, is a legend when it comes to long beach and to play 19 years in the nfl is an absolute anomaly that yeah. is that is the word yeah. for it what yeah. was he like as a high schooler both on and off the field oh great just a great kid I mean, you know, he was just as good as a basketball player as he was a football player. Uh, Mercedes was a, a great two-way player. I mean, you know, um, just good heart, um, just love, fun-loving, you know, like the joke. I mean, obviously, you know, there's a couple, you know, there's quite a few other great kids. I had. Of course. I mean, like Deshaun Jackson is another one that I still stay in contact with. And Deshaun and I and, and, and Mercedes, Mercedes and I, you know, we talk, you know, all the time. I just recently, we just talked before their uh, preseason game for the Hall of Fame. Um, just being, you know, wishing him, you know, all the health, the best moving forward. But uh, he's been great. You know, he's 
you know, he's been a part of my family. Uh, I've been around, you know, helping with uh, my, my kids call him uncle, you know what I mean? And so my two daughters, uh, Dylan and Kendall, you know, this has watched him grow. And so, you know, part of their whole thing is uh, they were out there and they, these football players helped raise my kids coming up as I coached. Yeah. Interesting. Mercedes Lewis in his 19th year. I don't think he would be maybe catching, catching passes from a USC quarterback, <laughs> man. I wonder how, what he thinks about that. Uh, yeah. but, but changing gears here in, into the girls flag football, when I first heard about girls flag football being a high school sport, at least here in California, mm -hmm. I thought it's going to blow up. And yes. I think it has, both in the city section and the southern section. This will be the first year the southern section has championships. We'll get to that in a second. But when you first hear girls flag football, Rob, what was your initial thought to it? I'm a girl dad. So I was all positive. Uh, my daughter, Dylan, has loved football since... I mean, I carried her to practice in a baby Bjorn. So she's been around football all her life. And uh, that's something that we shared, a mom we shared. And then she talked about playing. And it just seemed, you know, hand in hand for us to, to continue to do it and, and, and to coach it. And then uh, talking with, you know, getting Coach Barbie involved. Um, you know, we had a big influence for us. Um, the Rams and Chargers uh, started a, a pilot program beforehand and were really involved uh, the year before. And so we got involved in that. And that was, I think that was bringing flag football to the forefront and really pushing it out there to all the schools. And it just, it gained a lot of interest. People loved it. People enjoyed watching it. Uh, the kids, you know, obviously they play other sports, but it was an opportunity for them to just play something that they were just having fun at. Something that was just allowed them to relax and play a game. They were still learning. I mean, it's obviously you're still teaching kids. Sure. I mean, basic routes, how to cover, you know, teaching quarterback how to throw the ball. It's just, you know, teaching the game at its purest level. When when you first heard it, it sounds like you got excited. Like you said, girl, dad, love that. Yeah. But then, okay, but then <laughs> to be excited is one thing, Rob. But then to think, you know what, I'm going to coach the team. Yeah. So can you talk to us about what that was it a was it within the same day you heard about girls like football? You knew you were going to be the coach. Did it take a little bit of pulling your teeth a little bit? What, what was that like? No, I mean, obviously, like I said, we we had an opportunity beforehand before uh, last year to participate That's in right. the pilot program. Gotcha. Um, we got we got asked to be involved. Poly was part of to be it, and then uh, Nike was a great you know, uh, partnership with that. And, uh, they really were pushing the sport uh, along with the chargers and the Rams in this area. And obviously there were like 16 other schools that participated and it was just a great opportunity. And as, as we, as we did it, um, as we played in our games, you could see the kids, just the joy of it. And then, and doing it. I mean, obviously I kind of fell into the position okay. a, a little bit in a simple fact, we had another individual that was going to coach, but he got a job promotion. And then the kids were like, Coach Shock, you you got to. You're do the it. guy, like, man. You, you're like, <laughs> we're gonna play. If, you know, we got we're gonna play for you. Like, you gotta be, you gotta be that guy. And I was like, okay, I'll be with you guys. You know, I, I'll finish it out. And then as we went through that season, I just fell in love with it, and it was okay. just great. It was, I mean, it re-energized me as a coach. Um, it put an opportunity for me uh, to just, you know, again, like teach the game. And and football is something I love. I love watching. I mean, obviously, you know, with all the great athletes that come out of our school, someone always asks me like. What, you know, what's your favorite team? I always say whoever a poly person plays for, and, you know, and that's just represented for poly. I mean, there's so many great kids that we've had come through there and that just to see some of these girl athletes play the game that they, they're, you know, it's important that they get recognized for it. They are some talented young ladies. There are some girls out there that are very skillful in this game and they're just learning it. I mean, obviously, you know, we're kind of a little bit behind other, you know, like Florida has been doing it for like over I was five say, I or some six other states years. have been added a little bit. Yeah, longer. a little longer. And you could tell, I mean, you know, they've had the programs, you know, all the way down through their uh, Pop Warner leagues. Um, but that it's starting to happen here in California. There's, you know, Friday Night Lights. There's there's a big push for a lot of, you know, club stuff, a lot of off season football. Uh, great opportunity for for many of these kids on both, you know, uh, male and female flag football. It seems to be one of the fastest rising sports. I mean, obviously, we just finished the Olympics, and it's going to be it's going to be an Olympic sport in 2028. Well said, and I, I do think it's exciting, and we'll get to the growth of that in a second. I want to stay on 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 the Long Beach Poly Girls Flag yes. Football Program a little bit more. You won the Moore League, yes, last year. Went yes. unbeaten, if I'm not mistaken, yes. eight and zero, nine and zero, something along ten, ten and zero. Oh, ten yes, and zero. Hey, my bad. No, no. My bad. <laughs> I mean, I, I got to you know, I got to let the girls. The girls, no, did, they, they did a great thing. They were they they had eight shutouts in the league. So you okay, know, um, obviously. I mean, you know, scoring is key, but the defense was was what we prided ourselves on. The girls, uh, you know, uh, we had this thing that if they get a if they get a shutout, they get donuts. And so that that Monday at school, they loved they loved the donuts. I mean, 
you know, it was like co- coaches bringing them. First thing, awesome. they were all lined up at the office. That's awesome. Every time. So there will be a bigger incentive this coming year, and oh, that's yeah. a CIF championship. Oh, so much. more leagues cool. Donuts are cool too. But hey, CIF championship. Um, can you talk about? Is that something the girls were already talking about? You know, ring season. You know, there, there's so much stuff these young people say now. So that's got to be an extra kick of gear oh, for them. Dude. Very much. I mean, and, and that's the talk amongst CIF Southern Section. I mean, there are some great teams out there, uh, you know, some some great programs, you know, uh, Olu, uh, Mission Viejo, El Toro. I mean, there's just some great programs out there that, that are really doing well. Um, we had an opportunity, you know, uh, to scrimmage, you know, and, set, and see some great athletes from from these other schools. And, you know, it's it's a talk. I mean, it. It's just not the coaches, it's the kids. The girls, you know, the, the girls want to compete. And, and, and you know, obviously there is an ultimate goal. I mean, the reason why they want that CIF championship. I mean, you know, again, more league title, great. You know, we there's a standard. You know, my, we got our preseason, then we won, win the league, and then, you know, go to playoffs and, and win a championship. So we talk about it. We talk about, you know, there's three seasons, the preseason, the league, and then, you know, playoffs. And we talk about, like, we all have a goal for each one of them. Well, I know that there's a lot of teams uh, either in northern Los Angeles or mm-hmm. out in, like, Riverside County or in Orange County, and they're thinking, man, that Long Beach team is pretty good. So don't worry. They're talking about you too, Coach. <laughs> and that I actually kind of just thought of it right now. Long Beach Poly Girls Flag Football, people know you guys are good. Did you have a hard time scheduling games or no, that, that wasn't No, I mean, right now, everybody's, just, everybody's trying to play. I mean, we, you know, there's a lot – I mean, there's – we have there's a big thread going around. CF, so uh, one of the coaches, I believe, uh, from Warren put it all together, like you know, asking coaches there's games. I mean, everyone's, I think everyone's just want to get okay. involved. No one's and get ducking in, anybody no, yet. <laughs> well, I, I don't think so. I mean, uh, biggest thing is like I, I think for opportunity for us is like you play and then you learn to get better. I think that the things that you know, obviously, you want to play good teams to see where you measure up and how well you stand and what things you need to work on. I think that's a big thing, and then also you know just to bring i really trying to get exposure of it i think that's the biggest thing is coaches want to get games and, and get exposure for the girls and i think it's a great learning experience the expansion of girls flag football i think we like we touched on it the once we heard it was coming okay participation that happened can you touch on what it's been like from year one to year two did you have more girls come out do you have lower levels uh, can you share what that was like yes um we had a lot of girls come out um we had a practice where you know we had 65 girls come out and try and then you know right now we we can host three levels on camp it's just it has not been like we don't it's not very popular for like a fresh soft level amongst I mean you know the bigger schools kind of have them but we have a group of you know young ladies that can play and it's just I think like anything else one of the key things is finding a quarterback Okay. You know, you have to you have to find you have to de- develop a quarterback and you have to have someone that can throw the ball because you can have all the skill people playing. You just have to have, you know, an efficient quarterback that really helps, you know, run your run your team and, and, and make make the team go. So that's key. And then that development, again, is like you're taking a softball player, Got you it. know, and trying to teach them the, how to throw a football. And then that development takes some time and patience and just, you know, walking them through it and then uh understanding that skill i mean they want to do it i sure. mean the kids are passionate about it but just teaching them is is the is what's really important what do you see uh down the road whether it be high school college well, what do you see for well, football? I, I mean i see it just it's expanding i mean it's 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 moving quickly i mean with with the 2028 olympics coming and and there's a lot of interest and it's just it's fast it's growing fast there's a lot of kids participating i mean i have a little niece that's playing and you know uh you know, she's in elementary school and she's playing Friday Night Lights. And I'm like, wow. hey, give me give me your schedule. I'll come out. And, you know, <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. Just, you know yeah, my little niece Melrose playing. I mean, obviously, you know, it, it's trickled down and kids, they want to play. And so, you know, it's an excitement at that elementary level right now. And a lot of kids are interested in playing, you know, obviously with the NFL channel showing the, the, the flag championships. A lot of people got to see it. And like yes, you said, did. putting it in front of somebody. Whoa. Oh. They, they see it and little girls see it like I want to play that game and you know like and I said it's just like I see it growing you know obviously the biggest thing is going to be you know hopefully real soon it becomes a division one you know division two scholarship opportunity for for young ladies in college I mean it's growing that way there's NA, NAIA schools available there's you know uh, opportunities for girls I think there's like 40 schools that are having it and so you know there are schools in college that are that are having the programs I I I forecast scholarship opportunity. I think it's going to be big. It could end up being, you know, something that's on TV. It already is, like you mentioned, with the NFL Network. And I think there, there's definitely something there. 
but there's it's twofold, and we kind of talked about that a little off air, yeah. and I want to touch on it here on the show. So uh, for most athletics that have been around a long time, the footballs, the basketballs, the volleyballs, the yeah. soccer's the world, there is the uh, traditional high school athlete that wants the experience, wants to play. Then you got the one that's hyper competitive, wants to be mm. a scholarship athlete, so which is all fine and dandy. But then that becomes the ultimate goal. It's not to just win the Moore League or a CIF yeah. championship. So my question for you is, when you put scholarship opportunity at the cap of what is right now this really wholesome, fun thing, which is girls' flag football, what what could that do to girls' flag football? I mean, I mean, obviously, just like the regular sports, it's just you know, it's a, it becomes very competitive, and then uh, trying to get the exposure, um, playing year round, or trying to emphasize in a simple sport. I mean, obviously, that's a big thing where a lot of kids are doing, um, playing a lot of you know their sport year round and club season and then high school season and then training. So there's a lot of fatigue to it. I think right now, like flag, flag football kind of is, it, it, it's kind of a good relief for a lot of kids, something different, um, ability, uh, something that they can, you know, show their ability and something new. It's refreshing. Um, it, I think when we get to that point with scholarship, the uh, competition for the players and, and then the expectation you know, you'll get more coaches involved. Families, probably, parents. Yeah, it, 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 you'll get the whole high school experience <laughs> as yeah. a as an athletic director and a coach. Yeah. Uh, I think you know the marketing will will change a little bit. You know, you're talking about people get involved and kids wanting to you know train off season and you know in season and those kind of things. But I mean, the purity of it right now is that people are playing for the love of the game and 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 you know for the fun of it. But I think also playing for the championship, playing for a CIF championship is the is, is ultimate goal. It, it's kind of nice to see f- girls flag yeah. football really have this moment of really kind of purity. Yes. Uh, yes. Would you like to echo any of that? Su- I mean, that, that, that's true. I mean, right now, like I said, you know, the girls that are playing, are, they're just, you know, loving it. And we're just trying to adapt around their their schedules. You know, you know, some of the girls playing, you know, the other sports and have club season and just really the adaptability and, and, and trying to make arrangements with all that and trying to fit it in. And you see that they're doing so much and them to fit this in their schedule means they just want to play and they want to have the passion for it uh, or, or because their their father played football and they've been around football and this is an opportunity for them to express, you know, their love for the game. I mean, football is loved by many people and the opportunity to be a part of it is just, you know, you see it because just want to be, you know, involved. I mean, I got I got some great athletes. I got a, you know, a family tradition of uh, the Ho-Chings at, at Long Beach Poly, uh, you know, Herman Ho-Ching, Daniel Ho-Ching, uh, Tiare Ho-Ching is uh, just graduated and is going to uh, Arizona State to play softball. Kiele Ho-Ching are just a family, a, a legacy of, of football players. You know, I mean, they wanted to play because they love the game. Uh, I got my quarterback, I McLean, is just a, an amazing player who's just playing because she, lo- she loves the sport. I mean, she's a great soccer player, got her scholarship to walk- Washington State, but, you know, she just enjoys playing the game. You, you mentioned uh, history, tradition, families. It's a perfect segue to talk about Long Beach. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's one of the most historic sports cities, um, yeah. if not in the country, for certainly in California and Southern California. Uh, you've seen a lot of great athletes. Kind of want to open it up for you in regard to just being part of that. You know, what, what what's that like at Long Beach Poly? I, I mean, I it's a great thing. You know, tradition. We talk about tradition at Poly and, and the, the great athletes who've come there. I mean, in all aspects, I mean, you you got you're going way back to like Billie Jean King, who and every time an opportunity, when I you know meeting her and and speaking with her and just talking to her about Long Beach, again that's like Long Beach royalty. You know, what I mean, obviously, you know, having that experience and having her come around um, onto the campus and her, you know, tweeting things like "When's the Jackrabbit? Always a Jackrabbit." You know, uh, enter to learn, go forth to serve. You know, that's those are things that she you know she lives by in her life, and so. Those are great things, and then great athletes from, I mean, from all sports aspects of uh, at Poly, being around there, you know, great coaches. I mean, you know, people have to be around the community. Long Beach, you know, it, it's, a, it's a great place. I mean, and it's a small community, and people know. I mean, but um, I just love being a part of it. And then uh, we got, you know, many coaches and re- have returned, like former athletes sure. have returned. You know, uh, my, my counterpart, Crystal Irving, is, you know, the girls athletic director, you know, she's a track and field athlete, uh, was at UNLV and, and, and great track and field athlete now running a great program, uh, doing well, a program we're in winning CIF, 
and state championships. So, you know, boys and girls, correct? She's boys and girls. That's coach, right. Yes. That's right. They won the boys and girls uh, CIF Southern section. And the boys won the state championship. That's right. So, I mean, I got great people around us and, and it's an opportunity. And just, the, you know, the tradition at Poly and, and, and that the history, it's so much, you know, it's so much. The legacy goes back. I mean, uh, you know, watching the CIF uh, website and learning about Pop Hyde, uh, you know, a, a great a fan of, of Poly basketball back back in the day. I mean, there's so many different stories and so many people's come through there. You know, I, I would do not do it justice not to be able to name everybody because if I if I do, I'd leave somebody out For and sure. they'd be upset with me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we talk about the history and how great it is and how great it still is, but the high school landscape has changed, Rob. Yes, and as an yes, athletic sir. director, I want your thoughts on, hey man, public versus private. You know, that's that's just the truth. Uh, the modern days, the St. John Bosco's, the Sierra Canyons, yeah. you know, all those Mission League schools, the Train League schools. F from 30,000 feet up, having seen Publix dominate for a long time, yeah. including Long Beach Poly, and now seeing the private Talk, yeah. schools really dominate athletics for the most part. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, we, we just try to compete with the best that we can. You know, we, we, we hope that the tradition, uh, the legacy, and, you know, the pride for Long Beach Poly, people want to come play for that, you know, name across that chest. Uh, we want we want to continue to be successful. We want to continue to compete at the highest level. Um, but, you know, we got to make sure, you know, like I said, we want kids to be there. We want kids to be at our school. We, you know, we want them to, to play for the love of being a, a, a poly jackrabbit and, and being, a you know, a Long Beach kid. You know, the legacy that has been left before, you know, we want them to leave their legacy. You know, again, you know, the opportunity of the, the private schools, you know, many of those people taking advantage of those opportunities and it's, it's great for them. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of thing, great things going on at those private, private schools. You know, the public schools have some limitations on, on those things. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, traveling and playing at you know, all these different places um, would be a great opportunity. But in the public school, you know, we're limited, you know, with, with funds and, and equipment and, and facilities. I and mean, there's, there's some limits that we have. And we have to we're trying to adjust the best that we can and do what we can. But, you know, we want to support our co I want to support my coaches and, and the kids that want to be at Poly. Um, and we want them, you know, to be the best they can and give them every opportunity. You know, one of the things that we love at Long Beach Poly, we're the home of scholars and champions. And we, and we emphasize that 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 scholar piece where, you know, last year we had, you know, 27 out of 27 programs have a 3.0 or better and become, all, you know, all academic teams. So, you know, one of the things that we want to make sure we, we continue to stress is the, the educational piece of, of, of that. When uh, I, I, it just dawned on me, when a kid does transfer out of Long Beach, does it does it bug you more <laughs> if the kid transfers out of the area into a private or if he transfers down the street to another Long Beach school? Wh which one would w would you say ekes you a little more? You know, something I've learned over time is it's like, you know what, if a kid not not everybody's built to be at Poly or, or at whatever school and they're transferring for whatever reason, you just want to be supportive wherever that kid is going, you know, wish them the best. And, and, you know, hopefully they're successful where they're at. I think that the biggest thing on that is just really just to move forward and, and, and give that kid the opportunity that they want and, you know, support them and hopefully grow. I mean, obviously there's something that they didn't feel I was comfortable sure. for them. And I think that's what high school is about being, you know, you want them to be comfortable. You want them to, to appreciate where they're at and you want them to be happy with where they're at. So that, that's what's important. I mean, because a lot of it is nowadays we're finding, you know, we're dealing with more with mental health and, and, and things like that where we want to make sure that we're addressing those issues that kids are, that we're, we're thinking about that kids also, not just their athletic ability, but how are they mentally? No, that's a, it's a great answer. Great answer. Great answer. <laughs> I, I, I just want to piggyback on that one last uh, one for one more thing. Mm -hmm. And that just staying on the transfer topic, and I generally ask transfer questions because it's such a it is such a hot topic no, nowadays. I mean, it's yeah. just the truth. And so I always ask an athletic director like yourself or a coach, the transfer rule, sitting out, having to move. Is there anything, you know, if you had your magic wand, uh, is there anything you'd rather see uh, on those rules or uh, maybe something m more harsh, maybe more lenient? Um, please give us maybe a suggestion that maybe you've been pondering all these years. Oh, well, you know, <clears throat> I've been around enough where I've seen the rules change sure. quite a few different times. And, you know, again, the biggest thing is, you know, in working us as a league and, and all the AEDs is, is communicating with our CIF Southern Section, with our commissioners. I mean, we have that ultimate, you know, 
power that in the sense of the schools coming together. If we feel that there are issues or concerns that we want to address, we need to do it in that manner that we do it. We meet as as athletic directors, as a as a league, and we then take that rule to CIF and then have the other schools vote on it. Because if if one school or one group is feeling, you know, that there's something that needs to be changed, I think we do it through the due process uh, through our through our Southern Section League. Through our, we first start off with our league, get that vote from our leagues in support of it, uh, introduce it to the um, the council, and then let all the other schools uh, in Southern Section vote on it. And I think that's the way for us to see, and, and I think that's the biggest thing is to address it in that manner. It's so true. I We had Tom Simmons on last last season here mm-hmm. on the Southern, uh, Southern Section sit-down, and you know a lot of people are believe that the Southern Section can just kind of wake up one day and go, you know what? Rules change, and it's like, that's not how it goes, actually. The schools, if they're so uh, willing to, uh, or they want a rule change, you know, we vote it up, and if that's what they want, that's what, then that's the rule we enforce. And so um, it it really is a kind of a misconception that the Southern section, or even any city, any, uh, like the city section office, for example, they can't do it like that either. And so that that's really interesting. And The powers are within the schools. Correct. The schools have to come together, like ADs have to talk, you know, and getting them together and, and, and making those, you know, recommenda- recommendations or suggestions and bringing it to, to, to council for like a vote or action item. Yeah. So as we start to wrap up, thank you so much for bringing, uh, being on Rob, just the last couple ones here. You, you're, you're, you've been around a while. What's next for Rob shock. Um, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not asking you to re- announce your retirement or anything, but you're clearly having fun. I, I can yeah. see it. You, ha- you have a youthful spirit in you. You're out there coaching girls flag football. Um, you know, just any, any thoughts on what's next for you? What's next for Polly? How excited you are in your, your job right now? Well, I mean, it, it's a great opportunity for me, but I also got to realize that, um, I'm, I've been there a while, uh, you know, I want to make sure that um, as an athletic director uh, that I'm preparing someone to eventually take this over because it, 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 it's a very important. There's a lot of changing, you know, uh, things that take place and uh, it, it can be very consuming, you know, time wise and that, um, you know, I don't see myself. I see myself still doing it for a little while, sure. but also want to start transitioning and mentoring, you know, someone who would be interested in doing it there. You know, there's a couple of other coaches on campus who would be interested in being the athletic director. I think the aspect of girls like football, I mean, I, you know, I was blessed to coach my daughter this past year and I thought that was a great experience. She graduates, you know, she graduated this past year and now she's going off to college. Uh, she's going to HBCU, Prairie View A&M. So I get to take her as actually we're, we're leaving here shortly, uh, <laughs> take her to college and, you know, watching that experience, sharing that. I have a, a, a young daughter uh, who's going to be 11th grader. She's a cheerleader. I'm um, going be a cheer dad. I want to support her in, 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 in all her endeavors and um, just, you know, trying to be there, be supportive of my kids in that sense. I, I know that um, Coaching and being an athletic director can be very time consuming. And I know I committed a lot to Polly. I know a lot people will say, you know, Rob Shock is, you know, oh, that's Mr. Polly. That, that, that comment, like, I'm there. I'm there. You know, I always tell my coaches I'm there for them. Uh, you know, I work for my coaches because I want them to understand that they're supported. I think that's a big thing. But I, I see myself, you know, I, I tell people now, I don't know, maybe six to eight more years, maybe okay. as, as, you know, working, but coaching. I don't know. I don't know how long that's going to continue on. I mean, I do love it. I can, it's a, it's a great opportunity. I just want to see flag football to continue to grow, but I also want to be smart and, and make sure that I'm, I'm putting it, moving it forward, help moving it forward and help getting it progress. And then sometimes that might be, you know, stepping back and letting someone else take over as for the longevity of it. Yeah. UCLA coach Mick Cronin says, uh, it's never good when someone says, we've been doing this a long time. <laughs> you know, you got to continue to progress forward. So for that to be on the uh, on your mind is, is, is probably a really, really good thing, Rob. Thank you so much for coming in. I, I'm getting this image of you uh, watching your, your, your junior uh, high school daughter <laughs> cheerlead and you in the stands kind of like <laughs> learning the steps at home and knowing all the, knowing all the stuff. Um, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Terry, I appreciate it very much. And yeah, I'm actually as an AD, I'm on the sideline. Watching. <laughs> That's what I'm so saying. I get the, so I get the up close. I don't have to be up in the stands, okay. <laughs> but I, I always make sure that I go over and acknowledge the fact that, you know, Hey, I, I make sure I check on her and, and see her performance. And I, you know, I, I appreciate it, you know, and look forward to, you know, hopefully seeing you guys on the sidelines. Oh. I'll show you my daughter when you come on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to meeting the fam. Um, 
Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Another episode of the Southern Section Sit Down. Rob Schock from Long Beach Poly joined us. I'm Tark Vitell from SB Live. Don't forget, scorebooklive.com, schedules, news, scores, and all of our content on si.com now moving forward. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.